Hey guys, Phil here, hope you're all well. What you're looking at in front of you is my 1000 series Sony PlayStation. As you can see, uh, it's got an X station installed. What I want to do today is I want to install a dual frequency oscillator into this Sony PlayStation. So if you stick around, I'll crack on with that. Now, you may be asking yourself, what is a dual frequency oscillator? Well, I'll come to that later in the video. But first, I just want to give you a bit of information on how the PlayStation works when it comes to its regions. Now, the PlayStation is slightly different than the consoles that came before it. If you take a look at something like the Mega Drive, you can change the language and you can change the video mode with switches. So that's a hardware-based system. Uh, the Sony PlayStation is a software based uh, system where basically the region is determined by what disc you put in the PlayStation. Obviously if you're putting out a region discs in your PlayStation it needs to be mod chip beforehand but like I said the console sets up depending on what region disc you put in the console. So if you put a, a PAL game in a Sony PlayStation uh, it will boot in a PAL mode. If you put an NTSC region game and a PlayStation it will boot in NTSC so I just wanted to to make that clear you know there's there's difference <laughs> this is more of a software based uh, region uh, than it is a hardware based region console now the big problem with PAL consoles is when we put an NTSC game in a PAL console and we start playing the game in NTSC what we're actually seeing is not true NTSC. Um, it's actually an outer spec NTSC signal. Now the reason for that is the GPU in a PAL console is clocked using a PAL crystal. Um, there's an actual difference between the NTSC frequency and the PAL frequency for the GPU. Now this is where this clever little device comes in this can store two different frequencies so we can store the PAL frequency and the NTSC frequency in this device and then we can clock the GPU at the correct frequency for the PAL and the correct frequency for the NTSC and that's what this little device does it's a clock generation circuit for the GPU what I've done is I've booted the X station um, and it's in PAL mode, uh, the default mode, because uh, obviously I'm using a PAL system. Um, I'm sending the SCART through my OSSC. Uh, the reason for that is because I can actually show you the two different frequencies here. Now remember I'm in PAL mode, uh, so let me just explain what these two numbers are. The first number is the horizontal line frequency, basically how long it takes to draw a single line. Um, the second uh, set of numbers are the vertical refresh rate basically how long it takes to draw the full image and then go back um, now I'll tell you the numbers for a PAL uh, system uh, signals the horizontal line frequency should be 15.625 kilohertz and as you can see that's pretty much nuts on and obviously the vertical refresh rate should be 50 hertz it's a little bit low but it's in spec. Now generally when you're working with uh, signals like this you get a plus or minus 1% grace so anything 1% is generally an accepted signal. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the video mode to NTSC and then I'll show you the problem with NTSC on a PAL system. I've switched the X station over to NTSC. You can obviously see the difference because there's a mismatch between what I'm filming at and the actual refresh rate of the TV. Obviously, uh, this is 60 hertz and I'm recording at 50 hertz, and that's why you're seeing that strobing effect going on. Um, but yeah, let's go down to the OSSC and I'll show you the numbers. Now, for a NTSC line frequency, we should be at 15.734 kilohertz and as you can see 
uh, we're not near that. Now remember, it's plus or minus 1%. So if I turn on the calculator and we work that out, so if we work 15.734 minus 1%, equals 15.57 so anything below 15.57 is technically out of spec and as you can see it's just barely in spec it's 15.58 so that's in spec um, but watch what happens when we do the vertical refresh rate now obviously the vertical refresh rate should be 60 Hertz so if we do the same 60 minus 1 percent equals 59.4 so anything below 59.4 is out of spec and if we look at the vertical refresh frequency it's 59.27 so that is out of spec the reason for that is because we have a PAL crystal uh, that is generating the clock signal for the GPU what I'm going to do now is show you the GPU and its clock What we're actually looking at here is the block diagram for the Sony PlayStation. Now, this is the 9000 series Sony PlayStation. The reason I'm using that is because the schematic was a lot better for the 9000 series than the previous series. But the, the one for the 9000 series is pretty good. It's really nice. Um, now, the, the clock generation circuit is different. Each device has its own clock crystal um, where with this one the 9000 series uh, the clock gets divided down by a chip but the the, the frequency is the same which is what I'm trying to say um, so if we take a look here's the master crystal you can see it here uh, and that master crystal is it 67.73 megahertz now the first thing that happens obviously it goes into a divider circuit here this is a little chip that divides the clock down and it divides it into two different frequencies we follow the first frequency and we come along you can see if you know anything about video you'll know these two frequencies are the chrominance subcarrier frequencies for PAL and NTSC uh, for NTSC it's 3.58 megahertz for PAL it's 4.43 megahertz uh, those frequencies go into the video encoder chip that gets uh, to obviously generate the color burst information for the composite video and obviously that gets spit out for the AV, AV output but if we follow the other frequency that gets clocked down and we come along we go to the GPU uh, and this is where our problems start if you in a PAL uh, region and you're trying to display NTSC um, if we take a look we can see there is actually a difference the, the GPU is clocked at two different frequencies depending on what region you're in. If you're in an NTSC region it's 53.693 megahertz. If you're in a PAL region it's 53.203 megahertz. Uh, and that's the problem. When we try to run NTSC on a PAL system, because the GPU is permanently clocked at a PAL frequency, we can never achieve true NTSC because we're being clocked at a PAL frequency. What I'm going to do now is show you how we correct that with the dual frequency oscillator. Now I want to show you the Sony PlayStation's GPU. Now the reason for that is the GPU knows what video mode it's in all the, all the time. Um, it does that through obviously the region of the game. But it also outputs what video mode it's in. Uh, and the reason for that is the video encoder chip needs to be told what video mode it's in so if it's in a PAL video mode or an NTSC video mode now the GPU does that and it does that on pin 157 and if we take a look at the label for the pin we can see it's labeled NTPL now you don't have to be Einstein <laughs> to work out what that means that basically stands for NTSC PAL and this we follow it it comes out goes up and it's basically labeled here and it goes to IC502 pin 13 that's basically the video encoder chip now if we take a look at this pin remember this is a, an output um, so this basically tells the video encoder 
when this pin is high it's an NTSC signal when this pin is low it's a PAL signal now what we can do is we can take advantage of this and I'm going to show you that what you're looking at now is IC502 the video encoder chip for the Sony PlayStation now if you remember NTPL goes to pin 13 and here it is pin 13 NT slash PAL it's labeled different on the video encoder chip but if we read the synopsis input terminal for the selection of TV output format connect to NT slash PAL high for NTSC and low for PAL so we now know what video mode we get if we send a high signal or low signal and what we can do now is use this to our advantage now we know that the GPU knows what video mode it's in at all times whether it's high it's NTSC whether it's low it's PAL what we can do is we can use this dual frequency oscillator to our advantage and I'm going to show you how this works basically this chip here is a clock generation chip it's similar to the one you saw on the block diagram um, in the PlayStation where it takes a frequency and clocks it down here's the master crystal for it uh, and this basically just clocks it into different frequencies now what you can do is you can program those frequencies in to this chip now we already know the frequency for the NTSC and the PAL for the GPU NTSC it's 53.693 megahertz for the PAL it's 53.203 megahertz so if we program them into this chip what we can then do is use this sense input here and we can tell the chip okay when you see a high coming from the NTPL pin from the GPU I want you to output on this pin here the NTSC clock frequency for the GPU and obviously that's at 53.693 megahertz when you see a low coming from the NTPL pin of the GPU which would indicate PAL I want you to output on this the PAL frequency of 53.203 megahertz to the GPU and now because of that we can clock in the correct frequency for NTSC games on a PAL system and that will stop the vertical refresh rate going out of spec because we can now clock in the true NTSC clock frequency for the GPU what I thought I'd do is actually show you how one of these dual frequency oscillators work um, I've got one spread out on a prototype board <laughs> what I'm doing is I'm powering it through my Benz power supply you can see it's 3.2 volts this is a CMOS chip so it's 3.3 volts uh, powering it at 3.2 volts uh, you know just to be careful <laughs> but yeah I've got power and ground going into the chip um, this here is the sense so this is um, acting like the NTPL of the GPU and I've got the clock signal coming out uh, going to my oscilloscope now what I'm simulating here if you look I'm grounding the sense input and that is simulating a low coming from the NTPL of the GPU that obviously is PAL mode and if we take a look at my oscilloscope what I've done is I've enabled the hardware frequency counter you can see it just there and if you see it's at 53.20 megahertz and that's the PAL clock frequency for the GPU so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to move this to the power input here that will indicate a high uh, and then we should see our frequency change to the NTSC frequency I've gone ahead and done that I've moved the sense from a low to a high now uh, that is simulating the NTPL pin going high from the GPU which indicates 
uh, NTSC. Uh, now this should have changed the clock frequency to the NTSC frequency. And if we take a look at the hardware frequency counter, you can see it's at 53.69 megahertz. And that's the NTSC clock frequency for the GPU. Now we know how this dual frequency oscillator works and functions, it's time to put it in the PlayStation. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip this down to its motherboard. I'm not going to show that guys, I've got a few videos on YouTube showing you how you do that. If you want to see those, I suggest going and watching one of my chip in the PlayStation or installing a X station into a PlayStation uh, and you'll see how to strip one of these down. So yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip it down and get to the motherboard and then I'll come back. Now I have the Sony PlayStation's motherboard all out in front of me. Now if we take a look, here's the GPU. And if we look just below it, we can see the crystal oscillator to clock the GPU. And we can see it's at 53.20 megahertz. Now the first thing I need to do is disable this clock going into the GPU. To do that, just above the right hand corner here, there's a resistor. What I have to do is I have to remove that. So I'll go ahead and do that and then come back. What I've done is if you take a look just here, is I've removed that resistor. What that's done is it's disabled the clock going to the GPU and I can now solder in our dual frequency oscillator. What I've done is I placed the dual frequency oscillator on the underside of the board because that's where we're going to be working. Uh, what I need to do now is just wire it in. So I'll go ahead and do that uh, and then come back. And as you can see that's the dual frequency oscillator installed. Now again, little tip for you guys, if you're going to solder to this point just here, use a, a thinner bit of wire. I've used some canine wire just there. So yeah, time to get this all back together and give it a test. And as you can see, we're all back together. Let's power on. Hopefully we get an image. And there we go. That tells me the dual frequency oscillator is working because if it wasn't sending out those uh, clock frequencies to the GPU, uh, obviously we won't get an image. So uh, that's working. Okay, so we booted in PAL mode. Uh, if we take a look at my OSSC old school scan converter, we can actually see the frequencies for PAL. Now, if you remember, the horizontal line frequency should be 15.625 kilohertz. You can see uh, that's dead nuts on. And obviously the vertical refresh frequency should be 50 hertz. And we're just below that, but that's well within the 1% tolerance. Uh, and I would expect that because it was the same as before. Uh, it was the NTSC one what was out because obviously we had a PAL crystal. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap video modes. I'm going to go into the options uh, and change to NTSC uh, in the X station. Uh, and then we'll take a look and see if our vertical refresh frequency uh, is still out of spec. So I've gone ahead uh, and changed the video mode to NTSC in the options on the X station. You can see, uh, if you look, you can see that shimmering going on. That's obviously because the TV's at 60 hertz and I'm recording at 50 hertz, uh, and we're getting a, a strobing effect going on because of the mismatching frame rate. But if we take a look at the OS SC, old school GAN converter. Now, for an NTSC signal, we should have a horizontal line scan rate of 15.734 kilohertz. 
as you can see it's 15.73 it's dead nuts on and we should have a vertical refresh rate of 60 Hertz obviously and we're getting 59.82 that's well within the 1% tolerance so we now have a in-spec NTSC signal coming from the PlayStation there you go guys the dual frequency oscillator installed into a 1000 series Sony PlayStation now if you're looking to pick one of these up you can get them from consoles unleashed here in the UK it's a very good mod shop guys uh, he has some great mods uh, to sell um, go and visit the site I'll put a link uh, in the description below but yeah there you go guys Let's play a bit of Alien Trilogy <laughs> I hope you liked the video if you did please give it a big thumbs up like comment subscribe all the usual stuff and as always I'll catch you on the next one we don't win catch you next time guys <laughs>